哇，现在应该已经看到屏幕了。哎，我开始录音了，哎，我看得到，我看得到。So hi everyone, um, so thank you for joining the the Terra Terra Talk today. My name is Zhang Jianyuan, and、uh, I graduated from NTU and in two thousand eight, and I start my PhD in Georgia Tech in two thousand eleven.、Um, I start I work on several projects before I joined Professor Citrin's lab in two thousand fourteen, and mainly we have been focusing on two types of optics. Um, two two type of phenomena in optics, basically, um, uh, uh, nonlinear optics and quantum optics. Um, so this is my talk is arranged. I'll first introduce my, uh, the outline why we care about this study and why we want to do this research. Um, then I'm going to move on to two other setup. One is a semiconductor laser with feedback, and I'm going to introduce the setup and one of the applications that we have been working on last two years.、Um, the next, I'm going to discuss、uh, a single photoemitters, as we are now capable of generating、uh, one single photon at a time. And we are going to discuss when we place a single photon emitter in front of mirror and with feedback, with time delay feedback, what、uh, complex or maybe complex phenomena we are hoping to observe.、Um, so I'll just start with very very basic discussions. So this is the most fundamental. Uh, feedback system. It's very general use in maybe like mechanical engineering.、Uh, when people study about the, the control theory, when they place、uh, a signal in front of anything and then use the, the、uh, measurement result to feed it back into the system and see what's the phenomena they will observe. Most of people want to control them, and this is a big deal in control theory. When they try to study these dynamical systems,、um, so um, um, here we see like very.、Uh, I try to reduce the amount of equation that we ha that I have.、Um, so this is the the most simple、uh, equations. This is、uh, equation of motions. So equation of motions. Instead of just the、uh, uh, the original experimental parameters, there could be because we have feedback, so we'll have the the delay time, we have the feedback strength, or other things included in the study of the equation of motions.、Um, so this could be applying optics.、Uh, I this. On these slides, I show two other,、uh, two different setup for、uh, optics. One on the left is、uh, is a, a integrated photonic circuit included uh, included uh, inside this small、uh, electronic or optic optical electronic component. Uh, so basically, they generate the photon within the wave intensity to generate、uh, random numbers. So I'll discuss this more in more detail later. But it's、uh, a well-studied system. People can use it to generate entropies and or other entropy source. So the one on the right is a very similar setup. If you imagine the semiconductor laser,、uh, a laser diode is now replaced with a single photoemitters.、Um, so if 
uh, here anyone know about uh, laser you could imagine it's a cavity and then you have a luminant source within the the cavity and generate lights and when the cavity has the same wavelength or they have the wavelength couples to this quantum dot actually this is a quantum dot in in the system uh, they, they could able to generate very high uh, very pure and very identical indistinguishable uh, photons once at a time and we're now interested in placing this uh, single photon emitter in front of a mirror and study the how we can how we are able to control it and or, or maybe we cannot control it at least we'll see very interesting dynamics um, so this so I began with the semiconductor with feedback uh, this this system we're typically we'll call this external cavity semiconductor laser uh, the system is shown on the right uh, we have a DFB laser uh, what we have a laser we place in front of the mirror and we found a simple but I think quite clever way to control this feedback strength feeding back into the, the laser and then we can measure the intensity using a, using just a photo high speed photo diode and while doing this we're also um, measuring the voltage with with the intensity <clears throat> so in here we see the external cavity length so that's uh, another critical parameters in the in in our study so that length well two times of this length divided by c is the delay time which we'll discuss later in the in this slide in the presentations okay so uh, this is uh, the uh, a theory describing the external cavity semiconductor laser Basically, it's well, obviously, it's called, it's developed by Len and Kobayashi, these two guys. Uh, we basically describe the system with three parameters we have electric field, we have optical phase when it's entering the, when the feedback light is entering the semiconductors, and we have the carriers uh, or, or carrier numbers which related to voltage measurement as I described in the previous slides. Um, so uh, in this system there are so we have so basically with this model we can we have the three equations of motions uh, describing the three parameters and typically when people study nonlinear up um, nonlinear dynamics people will study the the behavior near the equilibrium point or in near uh, well yes and in our case it's called external cavity mode basically uh, when when you set these three equations to zero then you're able to solve a solution a set of solutions that it's uh, stable, uh, that uh, or it's just equilibrium. It's equals to zero. Um, so as I mentioned, we have the uh, external cavity frequency. This is related to the delay time, and we have the relaxation oscillation frequency. That's some, some that's related to the uh, the current, the drive current. And yes, we can move on. Um, so in the first step, one of the most interesting thing that we are looking for is looking for a bifurcation diagram. A bifurcation diagram is uh, when, when we change one of the parameters uh, in, in the increasing or decreasing, we'll see the dynamics change 
according to these parameters. And the two, param uh, two figures below, these are showing the intensity as a function of these parameters. These parameters could be the, um, the, cup, uh, the feedback strength, as I mentioned before, or you can change the external cavity length, or you can change the drive currents. Mm. And uh, we see this bifurcation. You start um, very, well, quite simple. This is, we, usually we call this um, continuous wave. Basically, we have the laser, but it might increase or decrease the light a little bit. Then we have a jump. Then we increase this to, uh, we, we have this bifurcation branch. So this two branch, that's showing that there's uh, two uh, stable solutions. So in the intensity, we'll usually see uh, periodic regimes. Basically, we have a sine wave. Uh, then the next we'll have, uh, we will enter two other branch. At this point, we'll usually see a uh, quasi-periodic. The next we'll see a uh, chaotic intensity. Uh, well, which is usually a bit blur or very random thing. And that's how we use it for random number generations. So as we discussed in the in this in the previous slides, we now have a very like well studied models for a semiconductor laser. But as most of you must know that uh, we're, it's my, uh, a laser is just a bunch of photons. Uh, even though we can describe the model in a very, very well, uh, in electric field and carrier numbers, but when we, when we are generating a single photon at a time, we're usually, might, we might see different, um, behaviors. So changing from semiconductor lasers to a single photon emitters, that's the second part of my research. And the one I show on the right is a single photon emitters. We have a few layers of mirrors. Uh, they're they call black, black reflectors or if just mirrors. Uh, you have a quantum dot embedded in the center of this uh, of this pillar, and then so we have the photons emitting or com very confined in the z directions, uh, and we can control the photon frequency a little bit, but not too much. Uh, we can control and how how fast we want to excite or excite the quantum dot and get a uh, very nice nice photon a single photon um, so i'll first start with some results i have for um, semiconductor lasers with feedback uh, i'll first describe the properties space and then i'm going to discuss one only one of the applications that we have it's called optoelectronic oscillators. Um, so this is basically our experimental setup. Uh, with the probe on the right, we can measure the voltage and the intensity at the same time, uh, which is very, yeah, it's very interesting, but somehow it haven't been studied for in the last Mm, 10, 20 years. Uh, people usually focus on the volt, uh, on the intensity, uh, not optical intensity, but not the carriers. So now with this, we'll be able to get uh, voltage and intensity at the same time. And um, so this is one of the first few bifurcation diagrams uh, in experiments. Um, the one I showed you before is a theoretic, 
theoretical bifurcation diagrams. So because we're only taking the AC signals, so there's not very change. There's not that much change in the in the vertical directions. Uh, only the oscillations are being observed here. Um, so the parameters that we are changing is the feedback strength. Uh, as we can see, we, as we increase the feedback strength, we start from a laser, basically just a CW laser. And then we have a quasi-periodic regime, and then we enter a periodic. Then the next, we have a chaotic uh, signals. Um, so we, we're also able to measure the optical uh, optical spectrum at the same time. Um, we see that in the CW regions, there's only one optical frequency, meaning just the laser is very stable. You only have one frequency. Um, the next, we have uh, <clears throat> uh, quasi-periodic regimes which more than one uh, external cavity mode are being excited. Then the next, we enter the periodic regimes. We, when we see the period is separate by the relaxation oscillation frequency. The relaxation oscillation frequency, I, I probably haven't uh, mentioned this, it's de depending on the different uh, semiconductor laser. Uh, depending on the laser diode and the current that you're applying to. The last, when we increase the, the feedback strength, we will enter a chaotic, uh, chaotic region when all of these external modes are being excited. Uh, then in the later, we'll, we'll have another uh, slide showing other method when we characterize how um, how chaotic it is. Um, so I think I have uh, hmm. um, so I have I prepare a very short uh, movies. Uh, Oh, it's going 從那個我剛剛講的就是從CW到quasi-periodic到periodic,然後還有一些就各種不同的dynamical regime這樣子。然後and this the next one is this is chaotic time series for both uh, intensity and the voltage. Yeah, I think we have enough for this. Okay, so um, can I ask a question? Sure. So, so my question is actually for the previous, the prior slide. So in there, um, the, the previous one, so in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you have four, um, not really four, but four graphs, colorful um, graphs here. So the D, can you, can you explain that a little bit? Because um, other three um, use, amplitude for the y but this one this is d is for use is for frequency right what does that mean uh, yes so uh we have four graph in here so for um part for figure a and b this uh figure a is the intensity and figure b is for the voltage so they they have very similar behaviors uh, but some, because we have limited uh, voltage resolutions, so some of the small features cannot be 
observed in the voltage. Uh, the C is just a zoom in of uh, A. Uh, we've been from zero to 25 percent. So focusing on first half or first one third of the of figure A, and we have we also have the optical spectrum of the intensity at the same time. And yes, the 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 four figures in in the bottom are representing the upkill frequency. So they are up, um, the, the optical frequency offset by the, by the optical frequency of the laser. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, so we have two frequencies two amplitudes are representing the intensity and the voltage. Uh, in C and D, we focus on the, the first half of the intensity and compare that to the optical frequency at the same time. So we have intensity changing, and also at the same time, we can measure the optical frequency that's higher or below the uh, we, we usually call this CW frequency, but uh, yeah. So, and also we see that this, there's uh, bright stripes, that's, that they are separate by the frequency of, of the relaxation oscillations, relaxation oscillation frequencies. Hello. Hello. Uh, oh, can you just, 我问可以问个问题就是你这个图所以就是在这个图就是那个我们解那个 对对对对对，没错啊。所以我们现在变的就是啊，那所以所以这里面变的是什么东西？哎，变的是是是feedback uh,一零吗？还看？那可不，阿旭马豆这个里面的，呃，electric 用那个光学的方法 <笑> Anyway, how? Um, so next, so so this in this slide, I'm going to discuss the epic one only one of the applications of uh, this system. So this is called an optical electronic oscillator. This is typical use when we need to generate very high frequencies, but sorry, uh, high frequency of RF signals. Uh, it's very difficult to, for us to use a quartz oscillator and use um, other multipliers to generate the same uh, periodic frequencies. So on the top, this is uh, for generating a periodic voltage signal because we have direct access to the voltage now. Um, we have very 
high, well, we have pretty high quality factors and then we can get the phase jitter less than, uh, I, I think 10 to the minus four uh, microseconds. So the, the, the frequency now we're generating at uh, this it's uh, almost 10 gigahertz. Uh, okay, so so the ones on the the ones below, these are to generate a chaotic signal. Uh, people usually ask, we usually want the ARF signal, a periodic signal. Why we care? Why we care about chaotic waveform or chaotic signals? Um, so the the answer is quite simple actually. So people are trying to use uh, in all the Mm, in all the cryptographies, cryptographies, people use uh, random number generations. But usually, when we have the uh, random number generations with uh, electron in the electronic systems, it's typically not a real chaotic, a uh, real uh, random. There are still some type of trace that we can find. And usually they are much slower. Uh, so in here we generate the chaotic signal, and then we can use it as a, a type of random number generations. Uh, there are other characterization methods for uh, how randomness, what's the randomness, or how what's the chaotic, how chaotic we are for the signal. Uh, this is one of the results. So this is called largest Lyapunov component exponent. Um, as someone mentioned, sorry, I didn't catch your name. Uh, as someone mentioned before, this is the separation when two signals at time equals zero and time equals sometimes, uh, and then the separation of these two signal in its uh, state space, that if this signal, the, the space or the distance they are separating is uh, proportional to time, uh, there's a very exponent and you take the log and then you can see when this, if this is a chaotic, you will have a positive, uh, largest Lyapunov exponent. This is a very, uh, one of the simple way, one of the well, well studied way to study how chaotic a signal is. So next I'm going to discuss what happens if we place a single photon emitters with feedback. Um, I think Maybe Leo is here. He also have few publications on on uh, feedback for waveguides. Um, so for for me, I'm going to just going to discuss uh, um, a feedbacks a single photon feedback in optical regimes. Uh, I'll first discuss why feedback loop is important in a quantum limit. Uh, as I showed before, this is basically how how a feedback system looks like. Uh, there are two methods of feedback loops uh, where we try to prepare a quantum state. So the one on the uh, uh, in Figure A, this is a measurement based feedback loop. So you measure something, you want to prepare either zero or one, and then you measure it, and then if it's not as the, uh, it's not a target state, you just apply a, a, Z, a, a Z gate to, or, or minus something times Z gate to feed it back into the quantum system and prepare the, prepare the state as you wish. Um, the, it, it has been done experimentally, uh, shown in figure C. So this is just a feedback for, I think, uh, um, uh, sing, single ions, I, I believe. 
So it's easy to prepare uh, uh, well, an ion within a cavity. Uh, so the other method, which I'm, I'm more interested or most people are more interested in, uh, is called coherent feedback. Without making the measurement, uh, if we put a mirror in front of this photon source, we can actually prepare the quantum dot in one of the target states. So the importance of this is, or, or the major difference is, with coherent feedback, we can actually prepare the, the dot in, in a superposition state. Uh, unlike the measurement-based feedback, we can usually target in zero or one. Ah, I think not many people are. Anyway, um, so again, we have um, the equation of motions. Mm. So it, uh, feedback schemes, uh, control schemes using time delay. So they are period gas type feed control with rhythmic control and extended time delay uh, feedback. So here, uh, the coherent feedback can be used as period gas type control to eliminate the unstable uh, orbit. Okay. So the the advantage of period gas type feedback is to provide, uh, well, of course, feedback uh, instantly. Uh, it can be applied in every regime to stabilize uh, a system. Uh, it's non-invasive, and one of the best thing is if the delay time, which is should be a controllable parameters, the delay time if it's matching the intrinsic orbital period, it's actually have a stabilizing effect, and and you all, the last is it's preserving the coherent state without making the measurement. This is probably one of the most important for a quantum system. Uh, so before we start on the feedback, the study of feedback, I'm going to discuss a little bit, just introduce how a single emitter looks like. Um, so this, the, the right, the figure on the right, Bottom right, this is a uh, single photon emitters that our collaborating that our collaborator are ma manufactured in the laboratory. Uh, basically, it's um, three five semiconductor materials with embedded quantum dot inside in the center. Uh, they have a very clever way to etch out the the parts that's outside of the regimes. So all they left is uh, very well-defined micropillars. And they have the optical frequency matched to this frequency, uh, to the um, transition frequency of the quantum dots. And we have uh, two other parameters. That's the coupling strength and the uh, decay rate of the of the quantum dot. Basically, if we if the decay rate is too high, we call this a weak coupling regimes. That um, that the the photon emits they emit the photon outside of the desired optical frequencies. Um, so, okay, so for a, one, one single photon with feedback, it will have studied the, the behavior of a single photon feedback. Um, so on the right, we have three figures. Uh, the first is uh, without the external cavity, uh, with, without feedback. So that's emitting a single photon. The next, when we have certain 
<clears throat> certain condition match uh, for the cap, uh, external cavity length or, or the delay time with the transition time or the rubbing frequency in the in the quantum dot in the in the quantum dot we have we can drive the system even though it's it, it it's in a uh, weak coupling regimes we can drive them uh in a very periodic way um so the one that i produce in the bottom is i use the same method to generate the same result um so i can compare with their result in the future so we have we can generate very long periodic signals with feedback um as i mentioned before uh, the way that so the what the figure on the left this is classical uh when we have the delay time uh that that is a multiple of the of the of the uh shit of the period intrinsic period of a system when this system match to the frequency of the delay time they will have very high repetitions uh basically the, the orbit is more more or less stabilizing itself uh, so they they have level one two three four five something that's the the uh the multiple of the uh, of these two matching uh the one on the right it's this is uh i use it for a quantum <clears throat> uh in, this is the the same feedback in quantum regimes basically we have the similar process uh but uh the decay or the repetition of two signals are decreasing much faster than period gas feedback. Um, these are just a demonstration of how it looks like. Uh, we have the delay time at uh, three different on the top colored uh in the color figures i don't know how to say this the the top in figure c we have we see that if the delay time is not multiple of this it have very the orbit is very it's not very repetitive re, repetitive and as we increase the delay time we see this is uh the orbit is try to match to the intrinsic orbit and then it's very very repetitive rep repetitive 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 yes it's very repetitive in the as we change the delay time so next i'm going to discuss uh stability analysis this is very uh common study to study any dynamical system especially with feedback uh, when we have the feedback we'll try to calculate uh, if a system is stable or it's 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 a repeller it's a stable or it's a set of points so the criteria or the typical method is first to find us Station, stationary state or equilibrium states where all the equation of motions are being zero and the next is to define uh, to find the jacobian and then to study the st stability uh, we find the eigenvalues of the jacobian so for um, a, st a stable 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 system the jacob the eigenvalue of the jacobian will be the negative or the real part of is negative and 
uh, repeller, we have a positive real part, and the side side point will have some of the eigenvalues being positive and some of them being negative. Okay, so what what how do we study such system in a quantum system? Sorry. How do we study the such dynamical behavior that we describe in usually in a classical system in a quantum system? So first, it's simple because we have already we already have the uh, equation of motions. Uh, the one we have here. Uh, okay, sorry. The phi is a superposition of three states. Uh, so we have uh, an excited quantum dot being CE, uh, and we have a micro micro cavity photons being CG, or I think I labeled CC here. Sorry. Um, and we have a photon in the external cavity being CGK. So we can, we it's not that hard to, and then we have the, uh, the Hamiltonian that describes these interactions. Uh, so we can just apply the, this wave function to the Hamiltonian and then we can get uh, well in Schrodinger's picture and then we can get the equation three well uh, equation of motions uh, interestingly because this uh, uh, g of kt is describing the coupling element between each uh, between each mode the population in uh, Sorry, the, the population in the external cavity is uh, is the superposition of like infinite mode, right? So this G of KT spans from negative infinity to positive infinity, basically describe the coupling between the micropillar cavity and the external cavity modes. <clears throat> So uh, we think that we have only three equations of motions, but actually the, the third one is actually, uh, it's, um, it's like infinite dimension of uh, equation of mode, uh, sorry, of the modes that, are, that have very higher dimensions. Uh, so we see there's uh, in the denominators here, uh, C, uh, C of CK, and the summation of that going back into the uh, micro cavity. So as I mentioned before, that what's the first, what's the steps that we have? So first we find the equilibrium point. Um, so instead, because we, uh, so the, that's our showing here. If C of C, uh, if the, oh, shit, sorry. Um, if we design the initial conditions of CE, CG, and CK in this very specific ways, uh, we'll have them all being a stationary. Uh, it's actually a stationary state, and they have all its own um, oscillating frequencies minus gt minus gt, and for for this for the state in the external cavity, each of them they rotate along this k axis uh, at different rate. But this is actually very easy to imagine if uh it's so okay sorry so if you see the expression for c of ck for the stationary states this is a sync function a sync function is actually a Fourier transform of a square square functions so this is just a square uh a steady states 
in the external cavity length, it has the same optical intensity, if you imagine in this way. Um, so the, the next step is obviously uh, try to find the Jacobian. Uh, for, for that, we apply uh, small signal models. Uh, again, this is a Jacobian of infinite dimensions. Uh, it's almost infinite dimensions. Of course, in simulations, I, I'll be able to only trace down few of them. Uh, well, many of them, actually. Um, so by applying a small signal models, we can find the Jacobians. With the Jacobians, we'll be able to calculate the eigenvalues. Uh, well, here we have make a small replacement by just letting us to calculate the eigenvalues more easily. Uh, the next step is actually to calculate the the eigenvalues itself. So from the result that we have, uh, we can write out the determinant, uh, function of determinant of this Jacobian. Next, we can able to calculate the eigenvalues uh, on the top. Uh, so there are three different cases. When the first case is the, we have the optical frequency of our photons, right? So if the external cavity length match to multiples of the, of the wavelength of the photons, we'll have the Jacobian as a function of R, which I forgot to write here. R is, uh, you can imagine as a feedback rate. But R is actually the rate of, of uh, decay, uh, that of the decay rate over the coupling strength. So it's actually four gamma over G. Uh, let me remind you and remind myself what gamma and G is. So it's four. Okay, sorry, four gamma over G. That's uh, how we characterize a good or a bad cavity. So with that, we can plot all these eigenvalues. Um, so the one on the, uh, in case one, we have uh, these conditions. We have, well, so they look very similar, but if you plot them in the same graph, they, they, they are different. Uh, so we have, we can have, um, uh, and this is the re uh, imaginary part of the, of this Jacobian, of the J tilde, which is, so we, we care about this because J, the eigenvalues of J tilde times, uh, times C over L times the I imaginary part, uh, we'll have the real eigenvalues of the J of the J delta. So, okay. So basically I, what I'm trying to say is if we have uh, um, eigenvalues in the, uh, for, for imagine tilde over pi, this value being positive, we'll have a stable, stable system and vice versa, of course. Uh, the one on the bottom, this is the real, the real part of the eigenvalues and the imaginary part of the eigenvalues, but plotted as different uh, value of R, different value of this R values. Uh, again, we when we have eigenvalues in the upper uh, upper half, we have a stable, and the ones in the bottom is unstable. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is to see if this is stable, 
then we'll try to see if this is this can work as a, uh, a stabilizer. So if, if this has stabilizing effect for a state that's in a superposition. So I think I should mention here. Um, as I briefly discussed in previous slides, uh, the coherent feedback are able to prepare the quantum states in in a superposition state, which is not accessible for measurement-based feedback loop. Okay, so um, so this is typically how we draw a uh, uh, we call this black sphere, but typically this is characterize how what's the superposition of two states. Uh, if it's on the here on on the uh, of the of the black sphere it's a uh, well superposition states and then so we chose different initial conditions and we see that they are trying to stabilizing itself uh, well the ray curve is help you um, to help just to help to guide the eyes uh, we see that this stabilizing or the rate that this fit, that this uh, <clears throat> probability is decaying matched to the positive parts of the eigenvalues. So these values actually match perfectly with this decay rate. So we see that uh, this uh, end we see this, we call this bit error. This is uh, usually we want half, uh, half probability of a state, half probability for one state and half for the other. But most of the time when we cannot prepare them perfectly, uh, we have this bit error. In this study, I'm showing you that this bit error can be stabilized as time goes. Uh, this this error, this bit error, could be stabilized. And the next is uh, to study the nonlinearity of the excitation state or Fox state. Not okay. Anyway, it's called Fox state. Uh, basically, study the how many photons are there in in the in a quantum system. Because well, in here I only study only one excited states, and the next step is obvious to study the different number of states. Uh, so at this point, I only have uh, one uh, single excitation and two excitation states. Uh, but good thing is we we have the same Hamiltonians, so it it is possible to write out the uh, the equation of motions as we did before and to study the stability from there. But that hadn't been done. Uh, that's one of my future works. Uh, the other thing is if this stabilizes the phase error, um, the phase error is demonstrated when all these initial states are aligned on the Shi Dao. I should, yeah. And then we see if the fate, so on the figure A, this is uh, this is showing they start in equal probability, but they have different phase. Uh, what's the dynamics of this this uh, initial states? Uh, we see that it doesn't look like it's stabilizing or it might have very slow sta stabilizing rate that's not shown here. Um, yes, so we reached the conclusions. Um, I show two different types of optical feedbacks. Uh, first, I study the external cavity semiconductor lasers, uh, <clears throat> and we show the 
voltage and the intensity bifurcations diagrams. Uh, we are able to demonstrate uh, one of the applications. Uh, it's called optical electronic oscillators for generating periodic and chaotic wave waveform. And then we can plot the face portrait as we change the feedback strength, which also haven't been done before. Then, uh, yeah, I forgot to show the other slides. Then we move on to uh, optical feedback for in a single photon re regimes. So we have a very good results that match with other people's work. Uh, we have we're able to show a coherent feedback of uh, single photon emitters. Uh, we study the the effect of external cavity length or the delay time as as uh, of the effect of the stabilizations. The next we have. Uh, study the nonlinearities for single photon emitters when we have maybe one or two photons at the same time. Uh, the next I show also show the stabilizing st stability analysis for uh, single excitation states. Then the next we'll study the what well, we can improve the theoretical models that we have mostly in the two excitation states and see how we can get uh, e e equilibrium states in that case. And we're looking for to study to the stability analysis for two excitation states. And we want to see possibly, well, we, we are hoping to see in two or more higher excitation numbers, are we going to transition to uh, quantum chaos, or maybe it's always sta stable. Okay, thank you. Yes, that's all. that's uh, an hour and more. Hi everyone. Oh, hey, na, that. Thank you, Mr. Jian Yuan. Now, first, let me ask a question. Hey, sorry, everyone, let me ask a question. This question may be a bit low. Can you explain what this application is? What is it? Because I think when you were talking about it, you were talking about it. 我的感觉可能我漏掉了、嗯，你就一直在讲怎么样把它 stabilize 下来嘛。可是，阿、啊、娜，嗯，拿来做什么？嗯、你知道我意思吗？呃，有，好，我我从，哎、欸，你应该是想要问的是，在这个框量子里，量子这个里面，它为什么为什么可以 stabilize 有什么好处吗？对，嗯、呃。在量子里面有什么好处？就是，呃，第一个就是，一般人想要用来做 stabilize 的方法，就是叫就是这个，就是右上角这个 C 这个图。等你 stabilize， 你可能你可以 stabilize 它，可是你可能就我我不太确定你们大家对于这个量子资讯这东西了不了解？就是你如果你想要 stabilize， 不了解，我不了解。可能只能 stable stable 它在零或一的这个状态。喂，喂喂喂，我在听话听。所以所以可是通常我们需要的状态都叫一种叫 k k state， 或是它还有叫什么 g h z state。Anyway， 反正他就是想要想要想要在一个。哎 ，super position 的状态，就是它，就是现在那个，哎，量子计算很多东西啊，它都想要准备一个东西是在是在零跟一的 super position 的状态。可是你用 measurement base 的话就没办法 stable 它。那可是大家现在说，那我们来用 coherent feedback， 可是大家又不知道为什么 coherent feedback 可以 stable 它。或是 coherent feedback 要在什么样的 parameter 下面，它才可以被 stabilize？ 哦哦，这样我懂了
，OK， 因为我们的目标是希望它是零跟一，零跟一的 super position type， 这个就是零跟一的 super position type， 对 ，OK，OK，、okay, okay, 这样我、這個、我我,我是有一点概念。嗯哎、欸，好，那大家有没有什么问题？我我也想问很 low 的问题，那就是大家，嗯，没有 low 的问题，就是、没有。要要 stabilize 它，可是如果我记得没错的话，我很久很久很久以前修的课，所以我不太记得。但是如果你用 feedback 的话，那种 control theory 应该是利用 feedback。喂，哎、欸，我我还在线上吗？ Hello， 听得到吗？啊，用用 feedback， 然后来 control theory， 啊，然后来。就是印象中那时候是 feedback， 然后用 control theory， 然后去修正，然后再得到 feedback， 再去修正。那可是，在量子计算里面，它应该所谓的状态，应该是叫要马上就能得到那个状态吧？那这样子有办法容许，就是去修正，一直修正，得到最后我们想要的状态吗？因为如果在计算里面的话，我们想要一个东西在某个状态的时候，不是应该是想要马上就得到这个状态吗？嗯，我记我知道，因我我对 control theory 的了解是有限啦，可是我知道 control theory 里面它用的有 passive 跟 active control 嘛，那我记得在 passive control， 这是事实上这应该算是 passive control 的一种。但是，因为它不是，因为这种是，就像我说，这 co coherent feedback 它的优点是，啊、呃，是它，呃 ，active 哦，大家可能不太知道，呃，这个假设是 active feedback 的话，它是要量测多少以后，可能用一个 PID 的 loop， 对不对？然后去把它加上多少或者减掉多少，让它从，你要让它变成你想要的的状态，这样子。那可是，在量子里面，基本上，呃，它能够用的是，能能够用的这个是有限的，所以它事实上比较，呃，这边的 coherent feedback 比较算是那个那个 passive feedback， 就是你只要你只要你不是，就你没有这个量测的过程，你不能说你你量的是正 0.1 或负 0.1 然后你 feedback 一个负 0.1 回去，因为重点是你在这个。如果你做这个量测的时候，就会影响到它里面 super position 的 type。这个、我我大家应该都都应该有听过类似的，就你如果你做量测的话，就会影响到里面的 type 的状状态这样子。哦，所以了解了解不量测，可是又有 feedback， 就是然后又希望可以达达到 stabilize 的方法，这个就是我这边呃后半段在讨论的这个东西了。嗯哼，了解了解，感谢感谢。有那个我在蓝开，就是让让让我再问一下，接着问哦，就是这个，如果如果说你现在可以增加它的 stability 的话，那理论上你是不是可以去算说，你同样的同样的，哎，我我听得到，听得到我讲。就是说，如果你现在可以增加它的 stability， 你是不是可以其实可以去反推说，那原本同样的呃时间计算的时间，或是不管是什么样的一个单位，它可以增加出来的 certainty 有多少？因为我其实不是很懂 quantum information， 可是我之前可以增加的什么是有多少？不好意思，我没听清楚。增加的那个 certainty， 因为因为你现在等于是在零跟一之间不不 uncertain 嘛，对不对？对，过去的对不对？不往 c e r t a i n 然后你把它 stabilize 在零跟一，所以你就变成是有 c e r t a i n 嘛？我我没有理解错吧？有吗？呃，没有错，可是他在这边他的，对啊，我要想一下你的问题是什么？哎，对，可是。哎，你再再再重新讲一次你的问题好了，不好意思。我我的意思是说啊，这可能是可能是因为我可能我没有理解正确，可是我之前听跟别人在聊的时候，他们是说 ，quantum quantum information， 它有一个性质就是你算东西啊，你没办法算确定准。
但是你可以准到某一个几率，你知道我的意思吗？因为它是，它它有 intrinsic uncertainty 还是什么的之类的。呃，对，这个这个东西，我如果我了解你转述它的的那个说法是正确的话，这个东西，哎、呃，他们在讲的一个是你要怎么量测最后的结果。那量测最后的结果，因为你是。可能量了十次，然后有七次是假设有七次好了，七次是一的话，你就以为它的这个，你会把它写成这个 d e s t i n y matrix 嘛，对不对？然后你就以为它这个是 0.7， 七，但事实上这是不对的，因为这个这个东西叫做 q u a n t u m tomography， 这个东西里面，我这有点太细节，我不知道这这边讲，这 q u a n t u m tomography 里面有在讲。利用这个 maximum likelihood method， 它它事实上它不会是这个 0.7 的数字，反正它有一些方法让在量就 quantum system 就 quantum computation 里面量测是一个非常重要的问重非常难的问题。对，那呃，可是好像这跟你要问的问题不一样。呃，你要问一下它的 stabilizing stabilization 能不能被反推回去？我想可以啊，这事实上很容易的，对啊，因为如果你真的把这个系统变呃实验上这个实现出来的话，你可以，哎，我想一下用哪张图比较好啊，这个好了，你可以量，你从你 prepare 一个态，然后呢，然后你过多久量，然后你实际上你就只是做一堆量测，然后看它跟这个符不符合。所以我觉得它事实上是可以反推回这个这个态，然后来验证，事实上实验上来验证这个，哎，我这边做的东西是不是正确的？我希望希望有人做，都希望正确的。啊，我这个就是要看有没有人来做出来，我觉得是可以的，对啊。OK OK， 好，谢谢。Hello， 哎，这个是燕勇吗？谁？张勇不是啊，张勇没有在里面。张勇在里面吗？好。张勇刚刚有加入一下，然后又消失，我不知道他发生什么事了。啊，不要理他。加州，加州那个还没醒来。对啊，加州，呃，我已经尽量晚一点点，看加州有没有醒来，就加州好像没有醒来，<笑>反正是台湾人还没有对。<笑>啊哈哈，辛苦了辛苦了，哎、欸，谁在台湾啊？哦，我我我刚，其实我是因为刚到台湾，所以还在还醒着。<笑>我今天刚回到台湾。哎<笑>、欸，你你叫什么名字啊？这个庄银。我叫庄庄碧月，碧月啊，碧月是月光的碧月。哦、oh, ，OK， 哎、啊，你在哪里念？哪里那个？我在 D D C George Washington。乔治华盛顿哪一间啊？就是他 ，George Washington， 对啊 ，George Washington， 对对对，哦、oh, ，OK， 对，呃，我刚好前一阵子，对啊，那你在念什么呢？我是机械，哦、oh, ，哇，我最近也看了好多机械的东西哦，看那个 Control Theory， 看到快要疯掉了，对啊，因为对这个。就是 control theory 里面一个很重要的一个，就对啊，然后就就就之前在算那时候 controllability 矩阵啊，然后去去读的一些东西，我觉得 control theory 真的是很有趣的东西，对啊。但我我不是做 control， 我是做那个流体力学的，所以 control 那个我是大概十年前，对，我知道了，我只我想说你应该。呃、嗯，对啊，我说就大家，对啊，我最近才知道这 control theory 有这么这么难的问题在，对啊，数学上真的蛮有趣的，嗯，对、yeah. ，我不不过我刚刚我刚刚听说我刚好前一阵子在 Coursera 上面有上那个 quantum computing， 然后我记得他说 quantum 里面就是、啊、现在电脑是一跟零嘛，那 quantum computing 的话它就是。可以，比如说百分之七十的是零，然后百分之三十是一的这样子的 superposition， 是这个意思。没错。然后所以你是像那个
日本那个 k i o 大学的 Quantum Computing 吗？我只是顺便问一下而已。好像不是哎、欸，好像是美国的，我有点忘了谁开，但是我确定是美国的大学的教授开的。Okay. 对，所以你说要 stabilize、uh, 是要 stabilize， 说我今天想要产生一组状态是百分之七十的零加百分之三十的一。然后我今天要 stabilize 是指说我要能够很精确的产生出这个状态，是这样吗？是这个意思吗？对，没错，没错。就是如果你要，就是你刚,刚说的没错，因为它有可以 switch position， 就是百分之多少是什么，百分之多少是什么。然后这边的 feedback loop 里面的第一种就是，你如果是只是零跟一，我们叫 pure state 的话，要做这个很容易，你要用 feedback loop 去做它很容易。可是你要把它做百分之五十，在一个百分之五十在呃百分之五十在零，百分之五十在一的时候，这个东西就是没有办法做了，对吧？就是用 measurement base， 就你要量测在那个的话，这个没有办法，对吧？所以在 super position 的时候，就是一个就是要想新的方法来来 stabilize 这个东西。那 stabilizing 这个东西事实上有在在 quantum computing 里面有非常大的。研究在做它，因为，呃，我帮你们，你这个 quantum computing， 你后来有上到 error correction 吗？没有，我只上了两周就 give up 了。<笑> OK， 那反正就是 error correction 是里面一个很难的问题，就是因为你没办法，都同样就是你没办法做两侧，因为像一般的传统电脑做 error correction 很容易啊。你一个是一的东西，你把它重复成三遍就变一一一，然后你在点数的时候就传过去，如果变成一零一的话，你就知道中间是错的，对啊，那然后可能量子你就没办法做这些，因为你不能有什么 non cloning theory， 所以你就没办法做这个复制的这个动作，嗯，然后所以你这个就要有，这个叫 quantum error correction， 就是一个非常。大的研究这样子，然后它就有什么 surface code 啊， color code 的那个就是超级数学的，对啊，那个我之前有有看过一些，我就觉得天哪，超难的，对啊，嗯啊，不过我还没讲完，这个 error correction 它只能 correct 就是哎 discrete 的 error， 可是像我们这边一般大家要做的是要 error 叫要修正是。Continuous error， 这也是一个没有很难做的东西，对啊，所以这个东西是可以做到 continuous stabilizing 的这这件事情的，是我可以一直在连续的去去 stabilize 它，而不是而不是我做了某一些事情来才它才可以 stabilize 这样子，嗯哼。那像你刚刚说，因为 quantum 它本身就是，我记得没错的话，就是很没办法量测，它没办法准确的量测。那无论是像你今天做这个实验，你也必须需要靠量测才知道自己得到什么东西，或者说像 quantum computing， 它接收讯号那一方也需要量测，它才能知道它接收到什么讯号。或者像你说 error correction， 它也必须要先有量测这个动作才知道它有没有得到错误的讯号。那今天。就像你说的，量测是非常困难的。到到底今天在量测这部分的技术，真有足够，就是能够应用了吗？还是其实还是很缺乏这方面的技术？呃，是如果，哎、呃，你的问题应该是就有有两个部分嘛，一个是说，哎、呃，就一般来说 ，read out 是。readout 的结果是可以做的，可是你用 readout 的结果，你反推回它的 super position 的状态，这个是很难的。所以我可以要、哦、要说，要应该要分开成这两部分讨论。那一般来说，哦、就这种简单来说，你 readout 是很简单的。哎，也不能这样讲啊，就看你看你的系统是什么，像你你用超导，你用。Quantum dot， 你用那个 Iron Trap，Iron Trap 的 readout 最简单，诶、呃，其他的两个有难稍微难一点，可是事实上都已经做出来，都还大家都还蛮算知道怎么做的。可是你算出你量测出来的结果呢，是
两是零跟一的某一个这样子，可是你要真正算回它原来的状态的这个时候，你可能就要做像我刚刚举的例子十次，然后里面有七次是零这样子，可是你七十次里面七次是零，你没办法直接反推回去，它的几率就零点七跟零点三，对 ，OK， 这个就是这个就是因为它是。然后，而且通常你量的不是一个，对，你要量，呃，你不只有一个 qubit 嘛，因为好，就算有一个 qubit 这样量也没有多难，可是你可能到时候你是要有几千个、上万 qubit 的时候，你每一个要做这个量测，然后你要做了够多次，你要有足够的，呃，足够的，你要对它有足够的信心，这个、量测结果是对的，然后你要，你就必须要可能一千个 qubit。的结果你要量个十万次之类的，然后你才可以反推回去它的这个状态是什么，这个东西就是很难的东西，对吧、啊？而且它会有一定的误差。OK， 应该说，它的误差是跟你要量测的次数成反比啊。Anyway， 对啊。OK， 谢谢。哎、欸，安、啊、娜，大家还有问题吗？ Oh. 大家还有问题吗？没有问题的话，我们就再鼓掌，谢谢建元哦。谢谢。好，加油加油，听了听了，台湾加油。好，那就那就这样了，大家可以自己自己离线了。好，好 ，OK， 拜拜。谢谢。先高兴认识大家，好，很高兴认识你。忘了讲一下，就是说那个，如果大家之后，我之后会把影片贴在那个部落格里面，它只有会员看得到啊。如果大家看有问题，也可以寄给我，然后我再帮你转给建元，或者你可以直接联络他，也没有关系嘿。我是可以直接留言嘿，好是这样。OK， 好好好，我也会去那边看。对啊，如果诶，我的我的 Facebook 如果没有加我的话，不是千元 c h a n g 是 Ted c h a n g 对啊，或是你看能在部落哇里面看能不能 take 我，或是诶，或是加上我的那个之类的，对啊，让大家联系比较方便，嗯，好啊，还有那个影。丙，对不起，我忘记了。平原，丙原，碧原，呃，碧碧月。Hello、uh,。啊 ，Hello。啊 ，OK， 如果有问题，我们可以来讨论啊。如果你对这有兴趣的话，我想这个，这个我之后最近要申请博后啊，我都是在找这这专门在 quantum computing 的博后，所以之后有问题都可以再问，再讨论。OK， 好好好。好哦，我自己本身是做那个，可能没有直接关系，但是也是算 computing 的，就是 super computing， 超级电脑那方面的，对，所以对。热流需要的算真的很难呢、欸，对啊，嗯，对啊，但是九百基本上就砸钱了。最近之后所谓的那个，你知道可能啊，不好意思，现在变成我的那个结婚照了，<笑>那个，赶<笑>快把它盖住。哎，现在很大的一个叫 quantum simulation， 我不知道 quantum simulation 可不可以？现在大家都只是想说 simulate 的化学的分子的一些的的一些特性，我不知道未来像其他样子的系统可不可以来做这些模拟这样子，对啊，它现在是很大的一个领域啊，对啊，所以，好，好啦，好啦，之后再聊吧。就再聊，拜拜，拜拜。